So today's scripture is the end of the Lord's Prayer as recorded in Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. For some reason, this verse is not included in all of the translations and all of the modern translations. It is in the King James Version, and of course it is in the Russian Version as well. And the words are, For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And the meditation is the following. Although his kingdom has not yet been manifest, it undoubtedly exists. Let us fix our gaze on our heavenly king, patiently waiting for total victory over all his foes. Satan has been conquered by Christ and, quote, the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet, as St. Paul says in his epistle to the Romans. Christ, the head of the church, has been victorious and has thus given power and victory to the members of his body. Although much time may pass until his power and glory is manifest in his body, that is, in us, who are redeemed by his blood, we nevertheless must not lose hope, but should repeat every day, yours is the kingdom. With every new manifestation of his kingdom, the realization of the fullness of eternal life penetrates deeper into our soul. We are born for eternity, and time cannot last too long for us. Renewed souls in their striving for eternity enter more and more into new mysteries revealed to them. They are not afraid of Satan's threats. Even when the ground shakes underneath them, turning their gaze to heaven, they fearlessly continue to exclaim, Yours is the kingdom. No matter how great their losses or how debilitating their weakness, even when it seems that there is no salvation for them, they go from victory to victory, exclaiming, Yours is the kingdom when it is the most difficult for them, when the enemy besieges them with renewed force, they enter even more deeply into life, which is hidden with Christ in God, as St. Paul says in his letter to the Colossians, and overcome everything through him who loved us, as St. Paul also says in his epistle to the Romans. Let us note the marvelous consistency of these words and let each of us apply them to ourselves, to our hearts and lives. Can I say to God in my heart, by nature rebellious and willful, yours is the kingdom? Has your heart submitted completely to him? Is he the Lord and steward of everything there? If this is so, then his power will also be manifested there. Where he reigns, he also acts with power, and where his power is, there his glory is as well. A person cannot boast about himself. He knows that it is only the power of God that creates in him that which is pleasing to God, and that all glory and all praise is given to the only one worthy of all worship, our almighty and all-loving Lord. Let us say amen to this, and let our heart be a dwelling place for his kingdom and power, and let it bring him glory, honor, and worship.